Good evening, everybody. Again, uh, thank you so much for joining our Diverse Views at MIT Sloan, uh, our LGBTQ alumni and current student panel. So our moderator this evening uh, is Tsukasa, who is a part of the MBA class of 2025, um, uh, who will give a brief intro about uh, themselves and then introduce you to our panelists for the evening. So Tsukasa, the floor is now yours. Okay, so let's get started. So hi everyone, it's my pleasure to be here with these amazing panelists. My name is Gasa. I'm a second year MBA student at MIT Sloan and my program is a dual degree with um, the MIT Sloan and Harvard Kennedy School. So before I came to Sloan, my background is consulting. And this past summer, I did an internship at the government of Jordan in Middle East, supported them in creating um, innovation ecosystem. Here at Sloan, I serve as uh, the VP of Admission at Sloan Pride. So that's, yeah, let's go to the, yeah, the everyone's introduction. So next slide, please. So would you mind introduce yourself for each? Sweet, I guess I'll go first. Um, thank you, Sukasa, very much for sort of organizing or leading this panel. Um, as a quick introduction, I'm Austin DeMaye. I am an LGO or Leaders for Global Operations uh, graduate from 2022. Prior to Sloan, I was a mechanical design engineer um, working on various medical devices. And then immediately after, went to work for a product development consulting firm where I was both part engineer and product manager, sort of leading client relationships on various engineering projects. Um, more recently, I switched roles and I'm now an engineering manager at Intuitive Surgical, where we sort of design and develop uh, medical robotics uh, products. Um, in my role currently, it's uh, a lot of leadership of sort of younger novice engineers focused on their career development, as well as leading various projects as related to some of our medical devices. And I am happy to be here to answer any and all questions. So next is Zoe. Hello, everybody. I'm Zoe Abbott-Boyd, and I was a 2023 MBA graduate. Prior to Sloan, I started my career at Fisher Investments, and I was there for six and a half years in their institutional group. And I started as an entry-level analyst. There was nobody who was focusing on environmental, social governance investing. And I watched a TED Talk where it was like, fake it till you make it. So I was like, I'm the ESG expert. Uh, and then over the last six years, that kind of became the truth. Uh, and I ended by managing their ESG program. So back then that was about $30 billion spread across 26 funds in four continents. And that was a load of fun. Um, Post loan, I'm at Goldman Sachs and I'm in their private wealth management group. And so I help families as well as nonprofits think through all elements of their financial careers. And that's been a lot of fun. Lynette. Hi guys, uh, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you're calling in from. So uh, I'm calling in from Singapore. So I see a bunch of folks from, from Asia as well. And kudos to the Indian folks because it's really early for you guys. Um, yeah, so I am Lynette. I am a 23 MBA, um, just uh, just graduated last year, but it feels a lot longer than that. Prior to Sloan for or the earlier part of my career, I was at IBM doing tech consulting. Um, and then kind of just before Sloan, and we, we, we well, Zoe and I joined uh, around the, right after the whole pandemic um, piece. So there was all that confusion, lots of stuff happen, happening around there. Um, uh, and I ended up with a startup. So currently, uh, I'm still doing that. I did that through Sloan as well. Um, the co-founder and CEO of Safe Space. Um, that's headquartered in Singapore, but we operate uh, in about 20 countries right now. So we're a mental health startup, uh, providing telehealth um, and counseling, uh, mental health uh, counseling and education uh, for folks in various countries, mainly focused on uh, the Asia Pacific region. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Drew? Hello, everyone. Um, 
happy to talk with you this morning, evening. Um, before Sloan, I was working as a CPA at PwC, um, kind of in consulting. And I joined as an MBA 22 because I wanted to, kind of somewhat similar to Zoe, to pivot my career into renewable energy, specifically um, kind of project finance. And excited to talk all about that experience. It led me to Marathon Capital, where I did a couple years in investment banking right after graduation here in Chicago. And then I just, um, as of kind of two months ago, transitioned to work at a battery energy storage developer, also based in Chicago called Hecate Grid, where I um, lead kind of M&A processes, project financing, um, and other internal finance processes. So first question for the panelists is why you chose Sloan? So what was your motivation to um, come to the Sloan? Like uh, when you like uh, thinking of the, the school. So let's go with uh, Austin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think mainly due to the ability for me to get that dual degree between the, you know, diving technical, knowing that I, enjoyed and loved engineering, but also recognizing that in my own career, I wanted to sort of develop that leadership toolkit to sort of further develop and, and cultivate, you know, the skills of others. And being able to do both of those together in a two-year program was very, very enticing, um, which is sort of what ultimately led me to wanting to go to this program at Sloan. Thank you. How about the that's a point. Yeah. Um, well, I was not also an LGO. I loved having LGO friends. So that was a, a nice part of the program, just all being in classes together. I think um, there was a couple things. Like, I think the way Sloan was structured, even with their application, uh, it, it was to explore and learn and be curious. So I loved that it was the only school that I was looking at that did not ask what your future plans were like, you know, other schools are like, tell me your one year plan, your three year plan. But I think, you know, Sloan is all about exploration, discovery. And also what I think is a little bit more realistic is you're not really sure. And so I love that the core semester was a semester, you know, other, other schools, it's like an entire year. So, you know, we had the required curriculum, but then beyond that, we could do all sorts of different things. Another thing that appealed to me was the entrepreneurship. Uh, I took a lot of classes in the Martin Trust Center, and uh, if, if any of you are thinking about that, I highly advise Bill Olette's class, Paul Cheek, they're excellent professors. Um, and I think also just when I visited the campus, it's just like people just came up to me, they're like, oh, hi, like, why are you here? Like, do you need help? Like, do you want directions? And I was like, oh, I'm just here to learn more about the school. And they engaged with me and talked with me in a way that I didn't see at some of the other schools I visited. So I would say the culture of career and exploration, the entrepreneurship and the collaborative environment. That's true. Um, the, fir the first um, point that Zoe mentioned, like um, MIT won't ask you about the future goal in the admission, um, um, admission like uh, application. Um, they, they, they always say um, the past achievement is, it will show the, the um, the what you're gonna do like uh, for the future and your capability for that. So I think it's a quite um different things the the of the MIT Sloan from the different schools. How about no, you, I, Lynn? Oh, okay. I did one more, a hundred percent. Like I didn't go to Sloan being like I'm gonna be a private wealth advisor at Goldman Sachs. I had some ideas of things I wanted to do. I worked on a startup. I went through MIT's Delta V accelerator program. I thought I wanted to do VC. Like, but the point I'm getting across is there was just. There was a lot of room to explore and I wasn't pigeonholed into one thing. Great. How about you, Lynette? What was your motivation to come to Sloan? Oh, I wanted to be around a bunch of nerds like me. <laughs> yeah, so I stayed on the I stayed in the dorms um, and I felt like I was on the set of Big Bang Theory uh, with the rest of the MIT um, uh, and their equations on the walls and all that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, okay. To to be honest, it was more around the well, both the intersection of tech and and um, entrepreneurship. Um, I did my startup through through Sloan, um, and I wanted all the 
support from that. And what I loved is, yes, I did a lot of the entrepreneurship classes. So I go to class in, in, in the day and then straight away I can apply stuff that uh, we learned from the professors who were largely all practitioners and had their own startups as well, or, or well, no longer startups, but by then huge companies, um, and apply it uh, with my business right at night. So a lot of that around that. And I, I, I do echo um, Zoe's point as well, but folks are just really nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Drew? Yeah, for me, I very similar to Zoe, I kind of had a, an idea of what I wanted to do going into my MBA. I wanted to transition my career into sustainability, but didn't exactly know what that would look like in terms of type of company and what my role would be within that company. And so I kind of immediately was drawn to Sloan because it had one of the first and strongest kind of best developed sustainability programs out of really, really any MBA program you could compare it to. So that was one of the first things. And then I was really sold. I um, was able to visit campus actually at an LGBTQ visit day, which was, which was perfect. Um, but there's just something different about kind of once you get to campus, once you join the class, everything else that's got, that happened, you know, everyone doesn't really care what your prior career was or what your prior work was. It's really, what are you going to make of your program going forward? And everyone was there to support you to make that transition or make that change. It really felt like a, a very supportive, not cutthroat at all culture. And so, the combination of the program with the people I really wanted to be around, there just really wasn't another program that had both those things for me. That's, that's really true. Um, like uh, for me also, I feel that way. Um, very tight knit community and supportive and uh, we are quite close to each other. So next question is about the, the your experience in the community at Sloan. So, um, for the LGBTQ students, we have the Sloan Pride, and we, I want to ask about the, your experience and involvement into the, the Sloan Pride or other kind of the community here. So the, we can ask the Lynette, how was your experience in the community in Sloan? Yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't that active with a lot of um, Sloan sub-communities, but um, from the first, uh, after settling in for a couple of months, um, uh, I would <clears throat> I decided to go for an impromptu hike with some folks from Sloan Pride, and right after that, I ended up going for everything that was organized by by them. Um, and in my second year, I was part of the admissions team, um, as well within Pride, even though I had no intention on joining a student group to that level, just with the just with the my work commitments as well. Um, yeah, so Pride was really the only student group that I was very dedicated to, let's say. Um, there lots of nice, uh, lots of great folks, um, that I'm still in contact with. Uh, and we, we did a lot of things together. I think, um, I, I see some questions also around, like, like activities that were, were done, you know, like Halloween nights, uh, Romba was huge for, um, folks who, um, looking at recruiting and also meeting uh private folks from the others the other business schools as well so highly recommend attending that as well um and yeah uh we had very good precedents as well the year that um yeah the years that we were around um what i also like about pride is that they were very welcoming to uh SOs or and part partners as well um it feels like they they are an extension they, they they are an extension of of the Sloan community and sometimes it's nice you just hang out with the part you usually hang out with the partners sometimes more than the students if they are studying too much or or stuff like that um yes yeah, so that was my my involvement with um, Sloan Pride at least thank you Lynette um what about you Zoe how about your involvement and uh, experience in the community here in Sloan. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm smiling at the Lynette's comment because, uh, you know, we were obviously the same year. We're good friends. And um, one of our, our Pride's co-presidents was actually an SO. So I couldn't echo enough how welcoming the group is to partners. 
And, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot this week because I knew I was going to speak on this panel and I'm a year out. And it's funny because the experience was incredible there. Uh, it was the first time in my life that I was actually part of a pride group. And I think I'm only in hindsight realizing how impactful that was. So, you know, growing up, I remember, you know, my brother went to the University of Chicago. He's four years older than me. I looked up to him at the time. He was like my mentor. And, you know, my family's liberal. They don't like they didn't care that I was gay. But he said, you know, oh, like gay people, you know, it's fine. I don't care they're gay, but they're just so obsessed with being gay. Um, and he said that to me when I was in high school. And I remember like, I think I internalized, I was like, oh crap, I, I don't want to be one of those gay people that's always being gay. And so unbeknownst to me, I spent like the first, like before Sloan, the first half of my professional career kind of covering being gay. Um, it's one of the weird, uh, you know, we're minorities and for what, you know, but we can hide it. You know, I can, I can be straight if I, if I need to be in a certain situation. Um, and I don't think it was until I went to the first pride retreat, like, echoing what Lynette said. And I just, I immediately felt the power of having everyone in a room who has a shared experience. One of the fantastic things about Sloan, which I don't know if we've mentioned is like how diverse it is. Like, I think my year was like 43% international. So I'm in a room with people, you know, from Singapore, from India and Korea and all over the world. And in a lot of ways, like we have lives that aren't similar, but we all kind of without, like, we, we don't need to talk about, it. we just sort of have this mutual understanding and connection. And I felt that immediately through the Sloan Pride group. Um, so, you know, in terms of events, they have a fall retreat and we, we rent out a huge cabin and spend the whole weekend together. They have a spring retreat to Providence Town, Rhode Island, which I didn't know until I went. That's like a, a gay town and a really fun place to be. And going through all of those different activities was incredibly meaningful to me. Yeah, we, we in the Sloan Pride, we have the different type of the uh, events, like a small gathering to um, the big um, the retreat, like going to the, some, um, the big house and we're gonna stay there. And then we have the different type of the activities there. So, which is quite nice for me also. So, I want to uh, shift the topic to the about the recruiting and uh, the any like a kind of resources like, to support the LGBTQ students in the recruiting. So, um, how about your experience, Austin? If you use any um, resources to support your recruiting journey. Yeah, I might. This is probably not the best person to answer this because maybe I'm a little bit of an oddball, but I didn't use too many resources at the time. However, I recognized afterwards that there were several, you know, certainly to Drew's point, there's the LGBTQ visit day, which can be super impactful to kind of experience Sloan and understand maybe even what the Pride's community is all about. And even at MIT as a whole, there are other additional resources, such as I think the website's lgbtq.mit.edu that has several different resources to prepare you as a queer student on campus. Um, and so I wish I'd capitalize and utilize those as trying to learn more information. Um, and I think those are something that we should, you know, talk about more and people should utilize. Thank you. How about your experience, Drew? Do you, did you use any kind of resources like for the, the support? Yeah. Um, like many other kind of top business schools, Sloan um, attends Ramba, which I think Lynette mentioned earlier, which if you're not um, familiar with Ramba, it's kind of the largest MBA gathering um, for LGBTQ folks. It's usually in October or November. Um, and so that's a great opportunity, especially kind of depending on what recruiting cycle you're looking at, it kind of gets you in the door sooner. Um, pretty much every company will start filling their summer internship spots with folks from Ramba before kind of opening their, their general application. So that's a, um, a great thing to get plugged into, even um, on your first couple of days and weeks at Sloan. And Sloan Pride always sends a huge contingent there. Um, 
So that is one of the kind of the best recruiting options. The CDO, the um, I think it's Career Development Office at Sloan also has someone um, specific to Sloan Pride members to um, think through LGBTQ specific um, uh, questions you may have going through interviews or how to portray something on your resume. Um, if there, if you have any particular questions about, um, you know, about how to portray your identity or something like that. So there's certainly a lot of resources specific to our community that um, someone puts together that to really make your recruiting um, successful. Thank you so much. Um, this year, Romba is uh, happening in the Los Angeles, like this, I think it's September. and. Yeah, like a lot of companies, like from the consulting, the pharmaceuticals, or like uh, to the international uh, the organization will come and uh, to have the network. And uh, yeah, so like uh, that's a good resource for the, the students like uh, in the, the Stone Pride. So um, my question is uh, about the engagement in the communities outside of Sloan. So there is like a MIT White um, LGBTQ um, Association also, and there is the Harvard, there is Greater Boston community. So is there anyone like uh, engaged into in the communities outside of Sloan? Um, I would say not, but I would say from my involvement, the biggest one was kind of cross events with the Harvard MBA um, Pride group. And so we hosted a few different happy hour mixer type events, which was um, fun, especially um, tangentially related. You can cross register for courses at Harvard Business School. Um, and most people will take advantage of um, some cross register opportunity, whether it's at HBS or somewhere else at Harvard. So um, a lot of times they were classmates and then you would get to see them as well at kind of mixers or other events that we would host between the two groups. So I think that for me was my most involvement, but to the broader question of the community in Boston, um, I would say it's a very welcoming open city. There wasn't ever a time with me and my sort of identity that I didn't feel comfortable um, being out um, with my partner or with the pride group in general, or specifically even just wearing kind of the pride shirt, which um, for Sloan, you know, has MIT and uh, big kind of rainbow colors. I didn't ever feel uncomfortable wearing that out and about. Um, so, but I, obviously that's specific to me. I know other people could have different experiences. Thank you so much, uh, Austin. Yeah, I think also generally with the community to, to Drew's point, you know, beyond, I think the, the cross MBA, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to, or smaller opportunities that might be a little bit harder to find in terms of engaging with the, the queer community in say Cambridge or Boston. Like, you know, silly things that I did, you know, there's a, a poetry night every Wednesday night at a bar in Central Square. And that is one of the, weirdest, safest spaces I think I've ever been to where I can kind of put my mask down and listen to people, you know, share their beautiful stories, whatever that is. Or, you know, within like other other cities as well, there's some LGBTQ specific sports leagues. Um, so if you ever find the time as a, a business school student to go beyond Sloan, um, there are those as well where you can kind of connect with the community with people of really all ages. Um, I was fortunate enough to do that when I immediately after graduation when I was in the Boston area. And so a lot of those, I think, resources or activities or things exist. It does require maybe a little bit additional amount of searching and exploration. But to Drew's point, Boston is a very you know safe city, at least in, in, in my experience. Granted, I also admit I'm a cisgender white male, so um, it might be a little bit different experience for others. But um it is the community is there and it is strong yeah no i totally echo that um and the swag i thought was the best out of the pride club there's some good swag at sloan but the pride club the, the gay sweaters are wonderful and i also wore them all the time my partner wears them all the time like 
no issues. Uh, the only thing in terms of recruiting I wanted to add, these are more nonprofits on the national level, but they all have Boston chapters is there's out professionals. And so that's a phenomenal nonprofit um, that is really, as the title means, like just bringing together LGBTQ professionals across industries. And then there's a couple that are like more industry specific. So like start out, if you're working on any kind of uh, startup, they have a ton of resources. While I was working at a startup at MIT, I got a mentor through start out uh, and that was fantastic. And they're all across the country. Um, and then there's, there's more like specific ones. So there's out in tech um, and then there's out in finance. So there's there are a ton of organizations out there that can help. And then Ramba was phenomenal. Definitely go to the Ramba conference because there's recruiters from every major company that you'd want to work at there. And you can get coffee chats and it's a really great way to connect. Thank you so much. So last question for the, the panelists um, is uh, about the, your experience um, after the graduation. So it means um, the, how you engage yourself with the, the community of the, the MIT, like uh, the Alumni Association or any kind of like a community that we do the MIT. So how's, how's your experience like after graduation? Did anyone can go? Um, working in renewables, there's definitely a very strong contingent of SOMIs working all across renewables in terms of both very established large companies, startups, and everything in between. So that's been um, great, not only because I was recently job hunting, but even before that, just you constantly at every company you interact with or every place you go are running into SOMIs. Um, another opportunity again, sort of specific to energy, but it applies pretty much in any sector you would go into. There's a renewable energy finance round table hosted at Sloan, I think it's twice a year, um, uh, once in the spring and once in the fall. And so I participated in that. It's a great um, just group of Sloanies working in energy and renewables from um, so all sorts of programs and class years coming together to think through what's kind of the next frontier, what's the um, next big problem that we would wanna solve. And, um, you know, as these things happen, as I was looking for a job, one of the people in the room that I've kind of connected with has been a mentor for me, was said, hey, like, I'm looking for someone with this type of experience, like, let me know if you're interested. And that sort of stuff, I think happens a lot with the Sony's helping Sony's mindset. Um, if you need help getting connected to someone or um, uh, are just looking to get information on something, a Sony is always your first place to turn because either they'll know or they'll get you connected to someone who can. So the Alumni Network post Sloan is probably, I thought it was important while you're at Sloan, but it's even sort of more important now. How about you, Lynette? I think you're back to Singapore, but how was your experience um, after graduation? Yeah. Um, so one thing that I did not expect is the number of wedding invites you get like in the one year, one or two years after Sloan, like everybody gets married after school, uh, which is great. And it's an excuse to meet up again. I see all the other panelists smiling. You know, it's true. Um, so, I mean, socially, that's one thing in... Um, it's I've gotten connected with like the MIT Club of Singapore, uh, which is the broader the broader MIT um network out here, um, I would say primarily in Southeast Asia or Asia. Um uh, that you've got folks who are I mean the, the most active ones are, are those who graduated um MIT maybe 20 years ago. Uh, so that's a that's a fun bunch to kind of be connected with and, and get to know. Uh, for Sloan itself, there is a Southeast Asia gang. So actually, I'm meeting a bunch of them this weekend uh, because somebody from Thailand is coming to Singapore and then everybody who is in Singapore just kind of uh, uh, turns up for, for all these gatherings. Um, additionally, yeah, I, I echo what uh, Drew said around Sloanies helping Sloanies and if you want an introduction to anybody, um, I've had countless of, of examples of folks who have introduced me to clients or, or investors 
just by saying like, oh, hey, I'm uh, like I'll text somebody from Pride actually and say, uh, who is no longer he's Indonesian, but he's uh and but based in in um Washington now, but um yeah, I just message him. Hey, I'm going to Jakarta next week. Is there anybody whom you think I should meet? And then, boom, all the intros just happen. Um, so yeah, people are nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the the alumni network is what. Well, also, if you just reach out cold to a uh an MIT alum or or and especially a Sloan alum, um, I would say ninety percent of the time you'll get a response from them. That's super great here. That. So um, next section is about the the Q and A session with the um the attendees. So I will get back to the Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm back. So um to that point, first I'll start off by saying thank you everyone for for sharing your own experiences and providing all the um uh, the account that you've had from your own uh, Sloan experience. And we definitely have a few. Uh, questions for everybody in the chat. Some pointed more, uh, just trying to get uh, an insight from your own experiences. So I wanted to start off by asking a couple of questions about the Sloan curriculum, um, and really to start off, um, you know, many of our uh, attendees know that the Sloan's course load can be considered rig uh, rigorous, especially if you're in the LGO program. Um, is there an example that's uh, you can provide? when you were academically challenged? And then in addition to that, what resources were at your disposal that leveraged you to succeed? Sure, I guess for my, I think the biggest resource is honestly the culture of the people. So for example, with LGO program in the fall, we're taking all those standard classes um, as a typical business school student will and on top of that, we might be already taking another one or two engineering classes. Or if someone really likes to get busy, they'll be doing research or something crazy like that. There are various moments during that, I think, that work overload where everyone always collectively comes together in order to help solve these problems to work together. So if you're in the same class as someone, business school, engineering, whatever it might be, Five of you are going to be getting together to finish that homework or to finish that report or finish that paper. And, you know, you're bouncing ideas off of each other. You're learning from each other and that experience. And it makes everything a bit easier or significantly easier. I think that is a huge resource. Um, a second resource that's a little bit more tangential is that MIT has really good mental health services. Um, so if at any point you do feel overloaded or stressed, they are a easy call, easy consultation away, um, which has been, um, at least for some of my peers, super, super useful to help sort of kind of help you take control of your own situation, whatever that might be, um, de-stress um, and figure out what a best path forward might be. Awesome. Um. I just thought of one thing that relates to this, so I'll add to that. Um, one thing also that really drew me to Sloan versus other um, programs is that we do have some classes that are case-based, but we're not 100% case-based. And some things really fit a case model and some things just don't, right? Um, so I think that variety in coursework really um, kept things challenging, but probably more importantly, interesting. Um, and then to the point of when I was challenged most, I just kind of remembered this, so I wanted to share. Of course, you can take as many like data classes and super advanced finance classes as you want. But one of the times I was most challenged was um, in a, the course was something called something like difficult conversations. And basically each week, all we did was um, talk through a particular situation where you would have to have a difficult, a difficult conversation Examples would be when you would experience or, or see um, some sort of discrimination in the workplace, either you experienced it or someone else, and you would just literally in class practice intervening or practice saying how you would um, follow up on something. Um, if you were pushing, and some of them were identity-based and some of them were, you know, you're 
you're pushing for a raise or you're, you need to apologize to someone for something that you did. Those were, I think, actually some of the most um, academic, I guess, like challenging for me because it was really taking sort of what you might think as everyday situations, but putting them into practice for like multiple hours a week and really thinking through um, not only the ideas behind it, but, but implementing them. <clears throat> Thank you both for um, uh, providing that perspective. I think to, to tag on to that question, another one focused in on um, our curriculum is, could you give an example of fun or interesting ways that you took advantage of the academic freedom to take courses outside of the required curriculum, whether that be some of the electives that you took or even opportunities to um, cross-register with the broader MIT community and or some of our um, uh, partner schools such as Harvard? I suppose for myself, um, you know, because you're able to take classes across MIT as a whole, there is a wide variety that you'd be surprised about. Like for instance, I took this very fun design class around interaction design, which had nothing to do with either my degrees, but allowed me to get like a different insight and maybe to what an industrial designer would look at. I knew a different LGO that took a music class as an elective, um, specifically, I think around music composition. Um, so it's like one of those little extra freedoms where, you know, maybe it's not ultimately what you're going to be doing a long time down the road. Uh, my friend is definitely not a professional guitarist, but it allows you to, you know, sprinkle in, you know, maybe some of your other passions or interests um, alongside, uh, I guess, maybe some of your classes specifically towards career goals. Yeah, for me, um, I said uh, I did internship at Jordan in the Middle East, but which I didn't expect like, before I came to Sloan, actually. And uh, I took one class about the entrepreneurship ecosystem uh, in the spring semester, and I focused uh, in the Middle East and some countries there, and I got interested in that, and I tried to reach um, the, the opportunities there. So um, some some... Uh, opportunities are not expected like uh, when you like apply to the Sloan or when you come to Sloan, but um, I think um, you can find a lot of opportunities um, unseen for you right now. Yeah, I took a couple of classes um, um, like wider outside, out of, outside of Sloan, uh, the broader MIT com com uh, community. So one of them was a, well, still kind of, is still related to, to my work, but uh, one was a kind of VC course for engineers. Um, and what was fun about that class was that we actually worked with some of the undergrads. Um, and um, I, I think it's really nice to see, like, if you get an MIT undergrad, uh, that's a whole different level, right? Um, uh, what was fun about that class is that we, uh, the professor actually had us go to um, uh, lawyer and VC offices um, downtown to have that simulation uh, practice of like negotiating a term sheet, um, going through prepping with your lawyer um, and then kind of see uh, what kind of things you can push back on, which ones are like reasonable uh, clauses in your term sheet. But that, that practical exercise of actually speaking with a, a real lawyer and a real VC, um, that, was, that was very impactful. Uh, the other one I did was a was a mental health um mental health tech uh course and it was taught by uh, it's taught by the like the guru of it um uh Rosalind Picard and the um yeah <clears throat> she's been doing work in this area for for over twenty years um so what was cool about that class was again it was a very diverse mix of people who are just interested in mental health. But um, the level of like innovation and stuff that she was sharing and that she had speakers come in to to talk about for for this area was was phenomenal. But that that what that course I remember the workload was really heavy for it, so I so I audited the class. Um, and you can do that too. You can just sit in and and not have to do the work for the class. That's that's also a nice way around it, I guess.
Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So we have a few more questions coming in uh, for this one. Um, uh, this is open to anyone who'd like to answer, but could you speak to how you personally exemplify Sloan's mission statement, which again is to uh, develop principled, innovative leaders who improve the world and generate ideas that advance management practice? I love this question because I wondered this the entire two years. I was like, what does being a principled leader mean? Like what, you know, um, and they, when you go to graduate, they actually make you sign uh, like this mission statement. Like I agree to do these things. Um, and so I think it's, I think it's different for everyone. I think the cool part of the curriculum is starting in core semester, but then throughout your time at Sloan, there's a lot of classes across different, like, you know, even like finance to organizational development, to entrepreneurship, to philosophy that really make you think about, um, what your leadership style is and how you embody that as a leader. So I think for me over the two years, I ultimately came to the conclusion that um, being a principled leader was being authentic. And as that relates to pride, I mean, that was really me being my whole self in the workplace. And so, um, you know, I mentioned like before Sloan and before the pride group and before thinking about being a principled leader, I thought it was unprofessional to talk about your orientation. I was like, oh, that's not that's not business related. Um, but then I realized like that was actually holding me back from um, being my, you know, authentic self, but also just like in weird ways that you can't exactly measure. So post Sloan, I mean, for my team, I'm in charge of our business development. And I've literally put being LGBTQ into my business plan. Um, and so, you know, I'm the only LGBTQ private wealth advisor at Goldman Sachs in their San Francisco office. And I think that's like a huge opportunity to look into our community and to connect with our professionals and the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce and to tap into that. And I don't think I would have thought about it that way had I not gone through the exercise of thinking about the mission statement, thinking about what leadership meant and then how I could embody that. Because, you know, I say I'm the only one, but I maybe I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I came out when I was 16, which I, I didn't know if that was young or old during Pride. I met a lot of people who, you know, were 30 and still weren't out. Um, and so I realized it's a, it's a journey for everybody. But I think being a leader is being yourself openly so that you're just, you know, for the 21 year old, maybe that just started working there. They And maybe they are in the closet. They can kind of see, oh, I you know, this is an inclusive space. Thanks, Zoe. So for our next question, uh, Austin, if you don't mind, I'd actually like to direct this to you to, uh, first, but then of course anyone else can jump in. Um, uh, but for this particular question, the community at Sloan sounds amazing. How does it support specifically budding entrepreneurs and VC networks? That might be a better question for Lynette, considering she has a startup. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, so the Martin Trust Center um, is great. I hang out there in between classes and it's um they have a lot of programs uh, a lot of pitch competitions um a lot of class uh some classes as well uh but just hanging out in the Martin Trust Center and random conversations that you uh, or introductions you get made uh yeah folks you get introduced to who are who are there as well there are a lot of people who go into Sloan interested in entrepreneurship and there are also a lot of people who get bitten by the startup bug um, after joining Sloan. And it's, it's it's great and it's exciting and it's something that you can uh, try out as well. So um, for, for entrepreneurs, we've got the 100K um, com pitch competition. We've got a ton of classes that I found very helpful. Things like entrepreneurial sales, entrepreneurial finance. Um, I did a class taught by uh, one of the founders of HubSpot um and that was also uh a great uh that was, that was scaling entrepreneurial ventures so yeah classes wise um uh, and all that vc networks um there are a lot of events that will also be um either through the entrepreneurship club so the sloan e-club or uh or through the martin trust center um and, and they are very active there 
there's no shortage of um, mixers and all that to go for to to meet folks. And you do meet different people at uh, at all these events. Awesome. Thank you, Lynette. So in the interest of time, I think we have uh, opportunity for two more questions for our panelists. I'll try and sneak in one more if I can before we get into uh, closing out this evening's programming. Um, but for this uh, this next particular question, um, it's a two-parter. So open to anybody. Um, uh, the first part is, how did you find adjusting to the workspace as successful uh, queer individuals? Um, I've had different experiences depending on the workplace, and I'm curious if you have any wisdom here. And the second part of that question, uh, additionally, how can I continue to stay engaged with the, the uh, Sloan Queer Network and community during the application process? So the other thing about Sloan is that we're all pretty shy. We've got, you've got to... <laughs> to wait to be allocated a question to, to ask, which is not difficult for other business schools. Um, I can take a stab at this. So um, in terms, I would say after, I did become a lot more out um, after Sloan. And I think similar is only this, this was my first, um, I only started getting plugged into the queer community at Sloan and then since graduation. Um, for Before that, um, I think in the workplace, I was very don't ask, don't tell, because you can kind of tell, right? But um, yeah, but people just that we didn't really talk about it um, out in even out here in Singapore. Uh, recently, um, my partner and I have also founded a queer business collective. Um, well, in Singapore for queer business, um, well, um, LBQ owners, uh, business owners in, in Singapore to kind of um provide support and resources to each other. So, yeah, I would say if if um, if there's a gap in support or something in your experience at the workplace or whatever, um, create it. Uh, there are people who would who would benefit from it as well, who are willing to give back their time. And now, now some of these folks are, are, are my closest friends. Um, the second part of the question, I believe, was around... Um, the second part of the question, um, as a refresher, was... Um, in regards to staying connected with the uh, Sloan uh, Sloan Pride and Queer community during the application process? LinkedIn. <laughs> That's my answer. Yeah, LinkedIn and uh, I think uh, uh, Sukhasa might have some stuff around that as well. Sure. So um, we have um, the kind of like a Google form, like for the, um, the any applicants to like a, Get the connection with the the Sloan the, the Pride students. So like a, um, if you like a Google the Sloan Pride and you will find the the um the the form. So like you can get the um connected with the the current students. Excellent. All right, we may have time to answer this one very quickly, but this will be a great closing question, um, for our panelists. If you could uh, wind back the clock and start your time over again at Sloan, uh, what's one thing you would do differently? I think for me, um, I knew I wanted to take a lot of finance classes because ultimately I wanted my career to um, to be in finance. But as a, you know, a lot of the other panelists have mentioned, there are so many other opportunities to um, take classes outside of your interest or to cross register or to take um, classes outside of Sloan at the rest of the Institute. I did do that some, but I certainly would have, if I could go back, um, take classes, you know, totally outside of my already identified interests and just enjoy some of the access to the rest of the, of the Institute and Harvard and kind of the entire Sloan experience. Yeah, I think to double down on a point that Zoe made, you know, quite a bit earlier, there's a level of exploration and to Drew's point as well, that is worth doing, you know, beyond that first semester, you know, think through anything that might potentially pique your interest, whether it's through a club, through a class or whatever it might be, you know, 
you know, put your foot partly in that door, um, explore, see what it might be, because I might peak an interest that you are surprised it peaked. And that could lead to a, a career shift that you didn't expect. Um, you know, I'd wished I had done a little bit more of that exploration up, up front versus maybe a little bit later on during my second year. Um, but it, to Drew's point, there's a lot to offer at MIT and at Sloan. Um, and just utilize, you know, your time there, your first year, your second year to kind of like find that out. Zoe, Lynette, anything to add? No, I think these are great points. Um, maybe one, a lot of my friends were organizing conferences and I organized one conference, their first impact investing one. But I think I was like, why are, why are people organizing conferences? It just seems like so much work. And then it occurred to me now, I was like, oh, it's a great opportunity to get to meet really fantastic people. Uh, and I don't know why that didn't occur to me as a student. So, um, you know, whatever area of interest, you know, we have so many different conferences like sports analytics, impact investing, sustainability, and especially if you're trying to pivot into a space where you're just curious um, or help organize a conference, like it's, it's some work, but then you get to meet phenomenal people. And yeah, I have no idea why that didn't occur to me as a student. <laughs> I'll throw in one more thing that we didn't cover um, in this conversation, which is I would have gone out more. Okay? I would have gone and I would have gone for more tracks. Um, so I, I only, I just really learned to balance my time in the second year where, so I was able to do that a lot more. But these are essentially, the, I mean, the tracks are essentially trips organized by your fellow classmates who are locals. So um, in particular, I went to, I went to uh, Mexico, Brazil, and Texas, <laughs> uh, Houston, <laughs> um, with the different tracks. And, and the experience is different, and I, I don't think it's something that can really be replicated. You also get a lot closer to your classmates during on a trip, right? So, I think making time for that, and and of course the pride uh retreats were absolutely my favorite. Um, so making time for these socials, uh, activities and yeah, um, it's a great bonding to and to build um relationships with folks who are, who are gonna be your friends for life. Mm -hmm.